Okay, time to start the assembly of the winch assembly. So I'm going to start by just putting the spool together. Now, this took a couple of little stripes with the um, uh, file just to get it down to the right size, but it's literally only two or three stripes, so that was fine and it fits. So just to make sure it stays fitting, I'm just going to add a little bit of CA glue to that and uh, take that one from there. Okay, just a little drop. This is quite a tight fit, it's not going to make too much to hold it. Right. Okay. Now one thing I'm going to do just before I assemble this is I have a, a hole which hasn't 3D printed right and this is where the uh, rope will go through so I'm just going to dress that out to 3mm. Uh, let's quick. It's supposed to be 3mm but it's not so let's just... Some of the holes you may have to dress out slightly to their exact size because 3D printing is not a precise art. Okay, I'm just going to clean up both sides of that. Oh, dirty. Right, okay. So that's the spool. The... Perfect, okay. So that's the two bearings in place. Now we're going to assemble that into the thing. Now I need a few washers for this. So we'll start with this one. And washer on the inside, washer on the outside. Okay. And we'll get this lined up. Whoa. Of course, the bearing falls out. So we have a washer on either side of the mounting. Almost there. Okay, and this end. It's all size, so just a single washer will go in. this right. and one washer on the outside and then a lock nut so I'm just gonna tighten this up as much as we can Nearly there. Give it one more half turn. Maybe. I'm actually just going to Right, okay, so that's the spool in place and it's running nicely. So we now have to mount, we've got the swivel arm here, which will carry the gear for the winch. So I'm going to put that together now and this will be the winch motor. And if for this servo, all I've done is I've removed the electrics from it, all the electronic, the printed circuit board in it, 
and I've put in, I've just wired parley directly to the motor in the servo. That's it. So that's just a motor now, it's not a servo anymore. I will tighten these up. Right, okay. So that's the servo in place, and now we just have to suspend it. So we're going to use a uh, five millimeter bolt. Dress that out a little, a five millimeter drill bit. So I'm going to just do that now. Let me just make sure that this one is also perfect. When I designed them in FreeCAD, I think those were all set at 5.4 millimeters, but the printing is not particularly accurate when you get to small items like this. So, oh, that's not one. Okay. Again, a nylock nut on the end of this one. Perfect. Okay. So we now have, and all I need to do now is I need to add on, ooh, so we'll drop that. Now this is a hex head bolt. And this I printed in, P in um, ABS originally. I'm not sure it needs that. PLA will probably do it, so I'll just stick that one onto the servo and tighten it up. Ah, I know what I need to do. For this one, I have had them come loose in the past, so I'm just going to give it one little touch of Loctite, or nut lock, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, the blue stuff, and uh, hopefully that will help prevent it from coming loose. I did have one come loose in a previous model, and uh, wouldn't lift the anchor. Okay, that's us done with that. And it meshes fine with that. When this is down, um, and it's held down by the other servo, this is actually the lock on this, so when it's lifted up, this runs free, drops the anchor, and then when it's dropped to the bottom, we immediately lock it again, and then if we need to, we can either pay out or haul it in at a later date. Right, so let's put this second one um, on here. Now this fell up is actually going to need to put this in first. So I'm gonna to have to connect it. Because what this does is this lifts this up. So I'm gonna connect this in now. In fact, no, I'm not. I'll take that. I'll take this servo arm off. 
I will do that as the last thing here so that servo arm can come off and we'll get on with putting this in place. So in this case it's literally um, sure it fits yep there we go so that's it in place now for this one I've lost the original screws so I have some hex head ones here that will do Right, so let's try and put this arm on. Clip it through. That's fine. And then we'll put it on there. And then the locking nut. And we're nearly done. Okay. So let's just lift that up first. Now I need to add this string to it. Now this is polyester. So we're ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it through that hole that I drilled earlier. It's a three millimeter hole and it's two millimeter polyester we'll just tie a small knot in that that's not that's the end of it and what I actually have here is um, eight meters of um, anchor line which I'll just spin up onto this now nearly done with this winch assembly. Um, I've said 8 metres, it would take more, but um, in the, the deepest place that we use for our racing is got about a 5 metre hole in the middle, so um, 8 metres is plenty of space. Right, so that's that in place. Now, when this is put into the hull, it'll slide in. This will locate and I clip the back. And then we will use uh, this um, knob here. We'll go down through here and we'll screw into a locating um, heatsink insert in the main body. And that's it done. Now, there's only one thing still to do with this. And this is to glue this um, sponge. Now, this is just a bit of a pot scar. And the reason for this is when you drop the anchor by moving this up, this spins out so fast that it has been known to spin out over the edge and catch. So to prevent that happening, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to glue in a little bit of sponge to this back plate. That's what the purpose of the back plate is. So it won't be able to flick over the side. Well, it should stop it anyway. We haven't had it ha done yet. That's the kiss of death. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a bit of um, uh, Gorilla Glue in this and glue this in place. And that will be us done with this assembly. <laughs> 